I'm almost ashamed to show this off on my YouTube channel as I'm otherwise a fairly decent person when it comes to building electronic stuff but this here is a bit of an exception this is a zero budget build I guess you could say and uh, what I mean by that is I haven't spent you know money buying wires and stuff I haven't spent nearly any money at all on this system and uh, the point of it is to show you that you can make something with nothing and that's what I've done here even if it doesn't look pretty it is absolutely safe and there is nothing that's going to catch fire here everything is properly fused and uh, you know even if it looks like a complete nightmare it's not dangerous and it's not it's not unsafe that's what I'm trying to say it just doesn't look very great because it's all trash stuff um, and of course if I find better fuse holders and stuff when I go look around for trash again of course I can rebuild this and make it nicer the possibility is always there but for the moment all I have are these inline fuse holders but of course if I find something better I can always change it so don't mind the looks too much of this it is trash stuff and uh, when you work with trash you have to you know use whatever you can find and uh, in this case I didn't find very good stuff so you know it is what it is but it does work and uh, that's really all that matters and it's not going to catch any fire and to be perfectly honest if it does catch fire in here I don't think this place is gonna burn very well <laughs> but uh, it's not going to happen because everything is fused properly so everything should be absolutely fine <laughs> well, here are the solar panels we have the big boys up there and my homemade holder which has proven itself to be extremely strong now because we've had multiple storms since I built this about a year ago and it's just holding up fine there's the fan by the way and there's the beyond connection box for the two panels and then we have the wire running in here and here are the old amorphous cells they don't really do a whole lot although I still keep them connected because they do still add a couple of watts so whatever they can stay uh, so yeah that's the insulation from the outside it's much neater outside than it is inside that's for sure also a lot of these zip ties are starting to fail but that's not really a big surprise <laughs> here you can see the mounting and the topmost screws there they screw straight into the frame of the house so it is not going to break, I can almost assure you that. Let's see, zoom out. And this is a view from the door here when you enter. It's, it gets fairly cozy in here, especially during the summer. And especially when there isn't this much junk everywhere. I really need to make this place nice again. <laughs> I have a lot of stuff in here. <laughs> but yeah, this is. Yeah, we're sitting at about 10 watts, so. So yeah, we have that. 10 watts isn't a lot, but it is at least charging a little bit. So that's nice. The batteries should at least get a little bit of energy hello everyone and welcome this is my off-grid tiny house which is very simple little metal framed glass fiber house 
build. <laughs> and uh, this is where I produce off-grid solar power. And uh, everything in here is kind of a work in progress all the time. And this place is a zero budget place, meaning that I my goal is to not spend any money on this place whatsoever. And I have sort of succeeded. I have only spent a little bit of money on the solar panels. Other than that, everything is trash picked. The wires and such, trash picked. Everything is trash. Uh, these lights up here, they're trash picked. And everything is trash picked. They're not put together right now because I'm going to clean them and I haven't gotten around to it. And here is the power system here. And uh, disclaimer before we go into this. This is not up to my usual standards in terms of wiring. You can see here, for example, stuff like that. Uh, it's all trash picked and... Uh, when you work with trash picks, you gotta make do with what you have. And this is trash picked fuse holder, etc. etc. And you see, this is a 4 square millimeter cable being spliced onto a 10 millimeter cable here. Don't worry about that. This inverter is only a roughly 250 watt inverter, it never draws more than about 20 amps. So this wire is more than adequate and it, this absolutely overkill wire is just some wire I had which I soldered onto the board in that inverter. This is a inverter I got in a junk box that I got from someone I know and uh, the inverter has a, ver a fair amount of problems. One of which is all the capacitors are going open in it, so you have to change them one after one. <laughs> so I had to change a few capacitors in it just to get it up and running. And uh, here are the batteries, these are 6 volt monobox. I think they're rated for something like 100, 100 ish amp hours, something like that. Wonderful batteries, refillable, of course. So they're probably going to last a long time. These are not in the greatest condition, but they are in decentish condition. Um, here is the distribution board, and uh, here are the wires coming in from the solar panels. We have these three, which come in from the amorphous cells, and we have this one here, the gray one, which is coming from the big panels. And uh, that all gets parallel in here, goes through the PV breaker and comes out through this cable which goes into this MPPT charge controller and this is actually... I got this thing for free as well technically because I got it... I got a gift card for a store and uh, they happened to sell this so I decided to spend my gift card and buy this with it. This is called the TS... Something I can't remember. It's a 130 watt at 12 volt uh, charge controller, and it actually does a decent job. Uh, I haven't had any real sunny days since I've installed this because I got it now during the winter, but uh, it does definitely seem to work. These meters, they are extremely cheap meters they are from you can buy these either on ebay or banggood or whatever basically they're all the same thing and uh, this one here monitors in how much power has gone in to the batteries from the solar panels and this thing monitors the load and uh, excuse this wiring here this is as I said earlier, zero budget, so I don't have any proper wire to use for the power supply. This supply 12 volts power to these meters from the distribution board here. And I'm gonna do something to try and tidy this up later. Yeah, that more or less wraps it up, and here are the current shunts. 
that one's for the solar panel input side and this one here is for the load side you can see I use a fairly thick main cable here and these shunts are on the negative side that's important don't connect them on the positive because the meters will blow up I've tested <laughs> so yeah fairly thick it's, I think it's a 10 or 16 square millimeter go in there and then we have 12 volt loads and we have the inverter ground there which then runs into the inverter and we have the positive here this is for the solar panels going to a fuse and into that thing and we have a four square millimeter positive here going to a fuse and into the inverter and also main fuse for the 12 volt positive load side here these breakers here should not be used as fuses because these are AC rated these are only being used as disconnects so yeah that's why I have double fusing here <laughs> because these should not be trusted they do work on DC I've tested these breakers they appear to work fine although of course they're not gonna last very long if they trip often on DC but it's just 12 volts in this case, so I don't think it's a huge deal to be perfectly frank, but uh, just to be safe, we got that fuse, which is the fuse we should rely on, and if that pops, then, <laughs> well. Happy with these meters, they've been working very well now for quite some time. And I haven't really put these batteries to the test. Uh... I acquired them and just put them in here. I made this absolutely overkill jumper. <laughs> just insanely thick wire. I think this is 70 square millimeter. Something absolutely ridiculous like that. Also a trash find. So <laughs> I just used it because I could. This obviously doesn't have any sort of advantage since these wires are only this thick and the load that I put on this is never more than maybe 10 to 15 amps so I don't I have no need for thick wires at all 1.5 ish square millimeter is more than fine for what I'm doing here this clip is from inside my workshop but uh, I have actually a few ideas what to do out in the off-grid house during the summers. I think I should work on some vacuum tube projects out there and use the solar power for you know powering everything. I used to actually have a lot of electronic stuff out there back in the day and I actually worked actively on stuff out there but that was a few years ago now but I had oscilloscope and everything out there I worked on a lot of different stuff out there really and uh, for the most part I never had any problems I had more than enough power to run absolutely everything and uh, so that's what I did I just so I'm thinking about reviving that this year the inverter is mostly used to run these lights and to run soldering irons and stuff on the bench here which is also a complete disaster right now because I've been working on junk out here and now during the winter I don't spend time here that much so I just kind of throw everything on the bench here and leave it be. <laughs> I have an extraction fan here for during the summers when it gets too hot in here and you want to do something there's a thermostat for it there so if you turn on this breaker here then you will engage the power to the ventilation system that's why there's a relay here and here is also a very crude homemade voltage regulator which uh, uh, reduces the speed because that's a a cooling fan from a car and it gets very very loud if you run it at full speed so I've got a re voltage uh, regulator there which drops the voltage to about 6 volts 
And that thing runs very silently at 6 volts and uh, moves more than enough air at the same time. So yeah, that's that. That's what this relay is for too, is to invert the signal from this. Because this thing is uh, normally closed I believe and we need normally open or vice versa, I can't remember. That's why I put the little relay in there. Uh, this part of the panel is AC 220 volts from the inverter RCD. This is a three phase RCD, but you can actually make them work on single phase. There's a trick to it. You gotta bridge L. I think I had to bridge L1 and L3 in this case in order to make it work. And it works just fine. I've even tested it with professional in measurement equipment. And this thing trips absolutely beautifully. And uh, we have ground wire here on the inverter here. Ground wire which goes outside to two grounding rods. One is here, one is here. It's a relatively thin ground wire, but it's 2.5 square millimeter. But remember, this thing can't output any current at all, really. Just a few hundred milliamps. So it's it doesn't matter. And uh, we have two ground rods about... They're pounded fairly deep into the ground. And we have... So we have two grounding rods for this installation here and uh, this RCD works just beautifully and we have proper ground reference in the outlets and all that so that's wonderful. And this inverter has to survive with neutral and ground tied together that's something that this thing can do. Some inverters can't and will blow up but this inverter doesn't care. That's uh, also one thing to make this work so you get neutral and ground at the same potential. Because a lot of these inverters have the ground floating. So even if you ground the case of the inverter, you're not going to get the ground over to the system or out on the output. So what you need to do is you need to ensure that the inverter doesn't mind running with neutral and ground tied together and then the chassis of the inverter you gotta connect that to the neutral and ground point and then out to ground otherwise it's not gonna work. So that's important as well. Here we have another ground. This one is just a DC ground because I'm using this relatively thick frame of the house as DC ground for multiple things. If we go over here we have this little power point here which is also made out of trash and a switch here. We have positive wire going here positive and negative. You can see the negative is being tapped off of the frame here. That way I can run a much lower impedance wire over here and uh, you know I'll get even less losses since I can use the frame as return and that gives me much higher current carrying capability and much less voltage drop so that really helps because this here I can put you know 15 amps of load on it sometimes when I'm working on something so it's nice to have that here you can see the wire fairly thick it's three times 1.5 are all paralleled and then going in here and the ground is taken from the frame here so so we have a fairly low impedance connection here which is great I see here I have a fairly interesting horn speaker here it's a uh, it's called a synergy horn it's got two 15 inch woofers one here one here and it's got a 4x6 there for the mid-range and highs. I should replace that with a compression driver, but I haven't been bothered yet. These are just to tune the uh, tuning frequency of the cabinets. I found that without these, the cabinet would only hit down to 70 Hz, and then the bass would roll off too aggressively. So I put those pieces of... Uh, 
wood there and the tuned the port so now it plays down to 40 Hz and sounds really really nice but yeah this was for when I ran 12 volt amplifiers I then built this monstrosity which is a homemade solid state amp now those of you who know me know I'm not a huge fan of solid state equipment because I much prefer vacuum tubes but uh, I built this and it does 175 watts into 4 ohms all day long it uses 6, 2 and 3 or 5 fives in the output section runs at a 100 volt supply and it is capacitively coupled believe it or not and I can tell you that those capacitors that it uses for coupling they are ginormous <laughs> this whole amp is one heck of a powerhouse and that thing can drive this speaker to absolutely insane volume levels so that's wonderful